Looks weird. Don't know if you've seen this before, but I've been looking it up. It's called the Graston Technique. It originates from something else pretty similar. An old Chinese remedy called Gua Sha. And basically, you're scraping the skin and getting up all the uh, dead blood or something like that. This all just sitting there, like, and it's, it's not allowing maximum blood flow to that area. So the Chinese use this to get rid of flu and cold because blood is what carries your nutrients. So if there's not a maximum amount of blood to a certain area, it's not obviously getting all the benefits of the nutrients that it could be in order to get better. It costs about 60 pounds for a treatment doing this. So instead I looked up home techniques. There's quite a lot of people that do themselves because basically, I mean there's areas you can't reach. It would help if I was more relaxed and my shoulders were relaxed instead of me standing up. But I'm using a knife, a butter knife, using the handle, uh, wrap the uh, knife bit up, something to hold on to. And then I've spread the area of coconut oil. And what it does is brings all that bad blood, if you will, to the surface. So that that is then going into your sort of thinner layers of skin and your body is then able to disperse it properly because at the moment it's a bit very deep and stuff like that. So look what's happening. It's pretty, pretty horrible, eh? And like I thought, maybe they're just scraping, they're just scraping the skin. That's why it's going red. But if you can see all those red marks, they're all like sort of under the skin. They're not, I'm not piercing the skin at all. And this isn't actually hurting me that much. It's not hurting at all. But what is interesting, because I've got a really bad neck today, I can't really get this way so much. And what's interesting is the areas where I'm scraping it, it all feels about the same sort of pain level. But in the areas that my neck is actually hurting me, they're the areas that are actually coming up in all the things. So this area here is coming up quite a lot. I mean, to me, that sort of suggests that something is actually going in going on in that area. Whether this is legit, who knows, you know? But uh, there's so many types of treatment. This is meant to help as well breaking down that scar tissue because you're, you're really rubbing on that muscle and smoothing it out. And I'm gonna try this in a few different places because I've actually got some scar tissue in my chest here, which I didn't know about until recently. But there's plenty of YouTube videos of loads of fitness uh, professionals and stuff all using this. But my neck pain has improved. I can move my head a lot more now. Before I was like going, Look at the state on this. So the areas that are hurting up here, by here, and they've actually eased off a little. Like I can turn my head now. And obviously I'm no expert. Don't listen to me. Look it up yourself if you want and do it of your own accord. But yeah, I've done it. And I'm gonna keep doing it for a little while to see if it works. To see if anything changes on with the vlog. Right, I've just got to, I'm going to put a hat on because probably a bit of a mess. I thought I'd give you a little look at how I am now. Still got the bruising. It's going away. I haven't been keeping on top of weighing, to be honest. Normally because I just go by what I look like in the mirror. I don't really care about what I weigh. I suppose I should keep an eye on the weighing because I want to make sure I am maybe losing weight or not too much weight too quickly. So I was, I think, 76 and a half or 77. Wow, so 78. Going up in weight, which is what I was doing at the beginning of the diet. I am obviously losing weight. Am I losing enough weight? Right, let's talk. So, so I would check in really. I'm gonna talk about cardio in a bit. And the reason I need to talk about that is because to be honest, I need to figure that out properly because I know what I like doing for cardio. For me, what works best is the morning walking, but doing my workouts in the morning at the moment, I'm not able to do those walks in the morning. So the only cardio I'm going to do is after my session, um, just a quick 20 minutes or something. So as of tomorrow, well, Monday, when this comes out so today, I'm gonna bring in the walks back in because they used to be so good for me. And I'm hoping that I'm gonna make a lot more progress now over the next, I think, because it's four more weeks left maybe. I'm also finding that working out in the morning means that I, because of the time it takes to travel, they travel back, things like that. By the time I get home, it's like midday or something, and then that's when I start eating my first meals. Not only do I not like the idea of getting my meals in, starting them eating that late, because I'm not doing intermittent fasting now, but also I'm finding it hard to get my meals in in time. So towards the end of the night, I'm having to eat my meals in sort of quick succession, you know, like an hour or so apart and things like that, which you can do. And I lost weight fine with intermittent fasting, which was 
where my meals are all grouped together, but I don't want to do that on this diet. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to spread them out throughout the day and get a steady sort of flow of nutrition to my muscles. I don't feel like I've got the most out of the diet yet over the last four weeks because of that. This week, we couldn't go Monday, or I had a bad back or something. So I had a day off on Monday, so I've done my sessions between Tuesday and Saturday. And so that was five days in a row, which I don't normally do, and personally, I don't recommend. I'm really, really exhausted and sore now because I did my big heavy workouts, like my chest, my back, and my legs. I still couldn't rest because I then had to go in and do my shoulders and my arms and abs and things like that. So I was just building on top of exhaustion. Not only could I not get the most out of those sessions, but it then leaves me now at the end of the week just sore. You know, my back and muscles are tired, my leg muscles are tired, and my hips and my abs are hurting. So I'm definitely not going to be doing the five days in a row again. I'm going to really actively avoid that definitely <laughs> right then cardio 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 nailed it I've been having trouble figuring out what type of cardio and when to do my cardio on this diet at the moment. The cardio that works best for me, usually, in the past, is LIS. Low Intent... LIS. That stands for... Low Intensity Steady State. Which means it's a low intensity exercise, so nothing too strenuous. And steady state, meaning you sort of maintain that state of intensity or lack of intensity uh, for a longer period. And because of that lower intensity, you do have to do it for longer periods. So for me, I normally do a morning walk. So I walk at a fast pace, not like mental fast, but there's no, it's not dawdling. You know, you have to keep up a good good steady pace and I do that for an hour and I do that first thing in the morning fasted because my body is gonna have very little energy then because I haven't eaten and everything and I've just been sleeping for eight hours and then it's gonna be able to target the fat easier in order to get the energy for that walk and by keeping it at a steady low intensity it's not gonna be demanding on my muscles which means that I'm not gonna sort of stand any chances of losing muscle because my body when it's looking for energy sources muscle is one of the places it might look for that energy um, but because it's not an intense workout, then it's not going to take it from the muscle. And I found that in the past, that's worked great for me. When I prepped for my show, all I did was steady state cardio. The thing with doing the morning walk is, one, it takes an hour. So that's obviously quite a long time, really, especially to sort of be doing nothing. You might be really bored. So like on the treadmill, you got to listen to some music. But even then, I mean, it gets a bit boring just walking, especially if you're in a gym where you're not really looking at anything. If you're just looking at a wall or something, obviously it's boring. I used to just watch Netflix on my phone sometimes because then you watch two episodes episodes of a sitcom or something and your cardio is done and it's easy but because lately for the first four weeks of my diet I've been working out in the morning I haven't got time to do or I can't do my walks because if I was to do my walks and then do my workout I've already used up a good amount of my energy on the walk and then I think it's not a good idea to be doing my session with no energy one my muscles might not get the most out of the workout and two I don't want to take that chance of losing any muscle because my body has already used up its energy levels so what I was doing and what you could do if time is of the issue is I was just doing 20 minutes of a sort of steady state but slightly increased uh, intensity of cardio straight after my weight session. I would have BCAAs during that to make sure I wasn't going to lose any muscle after doing my weight session. Um, and what you can do for that is just 20 minutes of something like the stepper, so like the Stairmaster, or if you're going to go on the treadmill, stick it on an incline at like a fast pace. So you're not exerting loads of energy like you would be if you were running, but you're still getting a bit of a sweat on and stuff like that. Another style of cardio you could be doing if you want, and I really enjoy this cardio, but I'll explain why I don't do it all that often in a second. HIT. You've probably heard of HIT. This one stands for High Intensity Interval Training. What you're going to do here for short intervals is exert the maximum amount of energy in a short time, in a short interval, followed by another interval of a sort of a rest or a steadier pace and then you're going to shock your body again and go back into that interval so a good example of interval training would just be to take a 10 minute session on the treadmill you're going to sprint your absolute fastest for 20 seconds and then for the rest of the minute say for the next 40 seconds you're then going to just walk or you could just stand on the side of the treadmills 
and not do anything and just take that rest. But as soon as that next 20 seconds comes along, after that 40 seconds rest, you're sprinting you all out again. And why this is really good is because it just keeps your body unsure and guessing. So your cardiovascular system is, it thinks for a second it's, it's getting a rest after that hard work and then all of a sudden it's just going mental again. And then because it gets into that state of realizing that this high intensity is so unexpected that it continues to burn fat and work hard throughout the rest of the day as well even after you finish your session your body's sort of a bit worried that you might all of a sudden start sprinting you all out again so it keeps your metabolism and your fat burning all of that higher level just in case you do that again but the downside is the next day it really has taken a toll on your muscles I find that my legs are so sore and because of that it affects when I'm gonna do my next leg session so sometimes I find it quite hard to recover in time for legs or if I've already done a leg workout in order to recover quick enough to do a hit session so that's the reason I don't include hit as much but I really would like to and you don't have to just do a sprint you can do it with an exercise if you're doing it at home you could do burpees for 20 seconds 30 seconds flat out and then for 30 seconds rest it's up to you what the rest period and the working period is you make that up and it's up to you how long you want to go on for it doesn't have to be 10 minutes but those are the three types of cardio that I would generally use the low intensity the high intensity and then the general just slightly steady state after the workout so now for the next four weeks I've decided I'm gonna go with what I like best which is the walks I'm gonna do them as soon as I wake up might be outside might be on the treadmill and then I'm gonna to go to my gym sessions from now on later on in the day but hopefully I'm gonna be a lot stronger because I've already got food in me and stuff when I do my weight sessions and my fat burning has already been done during the walks and I tend to do the walks only about four sometimes five times a week but you'll be surprised by how much it actually sort of takes a toll on your knees and your legs and you actually feel like man I need a day off my legs are pretty exhausted so Make sure you do that. Don't push yourself too far because you still need to work out and do your weight sessions too. And that's me done for this week. I'm really hoping now from this week, the next four weeks are just going to be the best for me. I'm really hoping that I'm just going to burn loads of fat. And I'm, over, I'm putting on size as well because the scales just don't seem to be dropping or they're increasing. So yeah, I hope it really goes well. Have a good week.